Hello and welcome Hi. to the Excuse Buster Show where we bust through what can get in your way of feeling how you want to feel and living the life you want to live. I'm Lizzie Williamson and this stunning woman next <laughs> to me is a mum on a mission to remind us through all the ups and downs, the good, the bad, the ugly with motherhood that we are not alone. If you have watched Mummy Time TV, which is going off, it's Gang become buses. massive, or read her blog, you will know that she is not afraid to talk about the things that so often we feel like we are too ashamed, embarrassed, or scared to talk about. Yeah. She is a supporter of Panda, Perinatal Anxiety Depression Australia. She is a mum of two girls and apparently is a bit of a farmer. Shezzy Denya. <laughs> Hi. I am, I'm a farmer. It goes farmer, then mum. No, I'm just kidding. That's no. fantastic. I'd love yeah. to see you out in the farm there <laughs> in action. With the hoe in the paddock, yeah. <laughs> so I have shed a few tears watching Mummy Time TV, both with the heartfelt conversations, but also the hilarious ones. Has there been a moment where you've been filming and you've been watching and you've pretty much peed your pants from laughing so hard? All the time. Uh -huh. Yeah, all the time. Um, hoping that you can help me with a little bit of pelvic floor today. Okay. Okay. Because that is a common occurrence for me. Um, yeah, look, uh, I threw a whole heap of mums into various scenarios and said, let's act. They've not done this before. Mm -hmm. um, and what we produced was absolute gold. Because we're all mums and we know what it's like to, you know, have crap happen. Yeah. What do you think has been the conversation or the topic that that's made everyone go, whoa, I can't believe we actually went there. Uh, in the latest one, um, the first poo after you have a baby, that was um, that was pretty full on. Oh, I remember that. Oh, painful. And, um, and also having sex um, with kids in the room, the mm. vicinity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it didn't happen in my household. But, no, um, it didn't no. happen in mine. I love no. that. <laughs> <laughs> so I also have memories of the tears when I was at my mother's group and that feeling of actually trying to hold back these tears because I remember looking around and thinking everyone here is coping and I feel like such a failure because I am not. You have traveled around with Sunrise, you've spoken to women in rural and outback communities. I'm sure you've been talking to lots of mums doing this filming and your own experience. Yeah. What do you think is going wrong that we have these feelings of failure and shame? Um, firstly, I think comparison. We are continually comparing ourselves to everyone else where every single story is different. And that's what I hope to kind of bring to um, the world with my Mum Stories podcast, is that no story is the same. We can have similarities, but you can't compare your journey to another. Um, the other thing is, I don't think that we talk enough. Um, I certainly didn't talk enough when I was going through um, what I now know was postnatal anxiety. And, um, and now that I do know what it was, and um, I, I'm just putting it out there, and I'm talking to lots of mums who are going through similar experiences now, or may have gone through something similar in the past, um, just talking, it helps. You need to just keep on talking. And we all need to support each other. Mm. We're in this journey together. Yeah, mums supporting mums, that's my mantra. Why do you think that we don't talk? Because I certainly didn't. I really was so, didn't tell a soul really what I was going through when I had postnatal depression. Yeah. Um, well, comparison, um, okay. I think, you know, mm. does interfere um, with why people don't talk. I think also there's a lot of shame. We don't understand it because we haven't spoken about it because it's not communicated a lot. Um, there's a lot of mums out there who don't realise that it is completely normal that the feelings that you have when you're feeling quite lost and scared, that is all part of becoming a new mum. Um, you know, but sometimes, like with me, you can get extremely anxious and you need to see someone, a counsellor, or, you know, now that I know about Panda, um, 
I, I wish I knew about Panda and the hotline back then. Mm, me too. Because again, you talk, talking helps and it really does. That has been the biggest thing for me. Um, and now when I go and talk to different circuits, you know, mums come up to me afterwards and they say, thank you so much for your honesty. And that, that means so much. Mm. When you look at motherhood, we gain a lot of things inside ourselves, like patience and resilience. Oh, yeah. We also tend to lose some things, like yeah. our sense of self or our self-worth. Is there something in your motherhood journey that you lost? Um, yeah, I lost, um, and it, it took a little while to kind of um, deal with it, but I felt like I lost a lot of my brain cells. Um, and now I you know do skits about baby brain and things like that but at the time I kind of went from sending a very large um, or crew around Australia for sunrise and I was able to organize all the logistics and help produce and I was you know I was a quick thinker yeah and I was able to articulate things quickly and then I had my first child and um, and my brain turned to mush and I couldn't deal with it because I would be talking to people and I would forget what I was saying. Um, you know, also the ability to sleep. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the what obvious is that, one. You know? Yeah. But, I, but, you know, I was used to having disjointed um, sleep, I guess, you know, working for sunrise and, um, and getting up so early. But I was not prepared for two hard rocks on my chest, 12 bouts of mastitis struggles with breastfeeding um a baby that you know didn't really want to sleep um and a whole lot of emotional turmoil going on and you keep that inside and it's like a little pressure cooker um you know it has to burst at one point so hitting rock bottom for me and i note that you say that in your book mm. you know certainly helped me kind of change the path that i was on so yeah sometimes it takes these, these worst things that ha can happen to us can produce the best things and That's that right. is what has happened to you. Do yeah. you feel like with your, the baby brain that you lost confidence? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also I, I blew out big time, my weight blew out. Mm -hmm. I put on 30 something kilos um, and that purely was because I think out of boredom in the last month um, I had to come off the road and so I just sat in my apartment just eating um, and I thought that you know that was what I was supposed to do and my body shape changed um, and I changed and I lost so much confidence because I thought I'll have this baby and then you know everything will be like roses the birds will be singing I'll yeah. be walking through the park and it was not like that at all um, I had a really traumatic birth I was very bloated I um, had a, um, a um, baby brain thank you um, I had a really um, a really long extensive emergency cesarean um, and I was left looking like a puffball after surgery um, the catheter had fallen off the bed and um, tore my urethra um, so I also had a rehabilitation you know there was a lot happening um, I had no confidence after I had my baby so I thought to myself if I can't even get this birth right then how the hell can I look after this you know tiny human being um, and that's kind of what spurred me on to start mummy time mm. that fear and that you know, that whole emotion of, of wanting to connect um, yeah so what was your journey from that feeling of no confidence to actually having the the confidence to launch something like mummy time tv you've got your your blog as well yeah the shazzy diaries is there something that you did some sort of practice and action that you took that you know looking back really helped with your confidence uh yes 
um, but it was slow mm. and it's been like my daughter is um, seven now so it's taken me seven years to get to this point mm. so the mummy time thing has just taken off we only started in September um, but I wasn't expecting it to be so popular but it's just gone you know through the roof so I just one step at a time um, to say was there any one thing I don't think so I think um, I just kept putting myself out there a little bit more and a little bit more and I think the driving force has been wanting to help and make sure that no other mums felt as lonely or as sad as I did or as lost at that point that I will you know remember for the rest of my life um, feeling very alone I didn't have a mother's group and I wished that I had somebody to talk to at 3 a.m. when my daughter had a rash um, Mm. Yeah, me too. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I could have turned on an episode I know. of Mommy TV. So I love that idea of when you, when someone is watching an episode, you want them to feel less lost, more alone. Yeah. What else do you want? For I them? want them to feel like they're sitting on the couch with a bunch of girlfriends, and you know, we talk about heavy stuff, and we talk about things that are taboo that you can't really talk about on commercial TV. Which is why I like it being, you know, where it is at I the bet. moment on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. The little bit of swearing. Um, but then also I want them to, I want people watching to um, feel a real sense of achievement. And the, the mummy life, um, the mum life skits are to make you laugh and make you kind of think, wow, that happens to me all the time. It's pretty funny, like when you're watching somebody else go through it. Mm. And to kind of see the lighter side of things. Um, that's, that's what I want people to feel when they're watching it. That sense of achievement, I think, is massive as a mum because you can get into bed at the end of the day and just think, what did I actually do today? <laughs> I haven't achieved anything. I haven't done anything. Yeah. I haven't so, even had a shower. Yeah. yeah, that was always a big one for me. But the thing is you have achieved things and that's what's so wonderful about your skits and your show is you watch it and you go, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm actually doing okay. Yeah. Mm. When you talk about that emotional stress eating I mean I know for a fact mm. when becoming a mother I became this crazy emotional eater probably because I was experiencing emotions that I had never experienced to that sort of level yes. before yeah what has been your experience in I guess trying to get that a little bit more under control is that's what's happened or you're still kind of there what's going on with that um I have to kind of check myself mm. from time to time um, I I didn't put on as much weight with my second child um, but I was still trying to lose what I'd put on um, I think it will always be a real struggle for me because I feel myself slipping some days you know if I have a really stressful day I'll go home and the first thing I reach for is chocolate Mm. But I'll try to reach for an apple and I'll, well, it's not really doing it for me. And then other people say, we'll have a glass of wine. And I'll, you know, might have a glass of wine. I think, you know, it's not really doing it for me. It's chocolate. And I, if I sat there and didn't concentrate on what I was eating, I could eat so much chocolate. Mm -hmm. I could eat out all, all of Daryl Lee. Yeah. Yeah. I came from a, a, a family, you know, in Bathurst. They were massive feeders. Our steaks had to hang off the plate. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how I grew up. I can eat a lot. I've, you know, I've got my name on certain um, restaurants around Sydney um, for, you know, for the <laughs> most you can eat. I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> my husband will be so proud. He used to wheel me out what is um, in for like, competitions. Yeah, yeah. the competitions. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. I know it's quite well you know not many girls do it but I can eat a lot and so if I yeah if I don't check myself it'll just get away from me mm. so I try to do other things you know, I try to meditate um, I try to be a bit more active I certainly try to do um, go to the gym at least twice a week if not three times a week and I live near Mount Panorama in Bathurst oh, so wow. I love to walk the mount if I'm really mm. stressed with a podcast on or music so mm. But the, you know, the emotional eating, I don't beat up on myself as much now. That's I, great. Yeah, I mm. let myself have a little blowout. Um, yeah. You've got to live, don't you? You've got to live. You're going to change my life today, <laughs> aren't you? 
<laughs> you know, I'm going to go home. I'm going to be like, I'm not going to eat that. And I'm not going to eat you that. You know, it's interesting because I'm not like that at all because I think I have suffered so much with body demons. Yeah. And I was a dancer. I remember when I was a dancer and being told I had to, you know, lose weight, this job. And it just completely screwed me up. Yeah. And now my mission is to have a really wonderful, loving, embracing relationship with food mm. rather than can't have this can't have that restricting it's a really tricky one because it can make you feel really bad and make you feel really hopeless absolutely out of control those yep. feelings are really awful I know those feelings really well yeah. it's a tricky as well because we want to feel great about our bodies and we want to put in our bodies what's going to make us feel good mm. as well and there's there is a definite link with that and I, uh, I know that science backs that up yeah but I had to work it out for myself mm. so years of traveling on the road with Sunrise and eating at service stations eating in the car you know eating all the wrong things high salt no water uh, lots of chicken parmesanas and then beer you know at, um, at the next hotel that you stay at took a massive toll on my body mm. and I look at photos now of when I came off the road and I looked like a busted peach with I had sinus problems I had mm. puffy face I uh, just uh, water retention problems and now if I don't have my water two liters a day I try to have if I don't have that I I start to feel yuck mm. And the same with food. Like I can't believe my relationship with food has changed um, since I have had children. Because now I, you know, I tell them you have to eat this, and they go, Ugh! and I'm like, that mummy loves it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I have to actually, I have to do that. And that, that's it, if if you eat really well, you feel great. There is a definite link. Mm -hmm. But for years, I denied that. Mm. I think also having girls as well. I've yes. got two girls. My girls are now 10 and almost 12. And I want them to have a fantastic relationship yes. with their body and and yeah. with food. It's it's certainly not an easy thing no, to have, but it's certainly what I want for them. I'm mm. sure you'd want the same. I don't want my kids to have issues with emotional eating. Mm. Um, and we do lots of skits with mummy time, you know, with mums are in the cupboard, like, yeah. you know, stuffing their face with chocolate, which is all pretty much based on me. Um, yeah. Have you ever done the freezer, you know, with the, the, um, <laughs> the bottle of vodka or, or something? No. no. okay. Yeah. The freezer. Yeah, yeah, you know, you put the vodka in the freezer. Oh, and you're hiding down. Yeah. No, I haven't done that okay. one yet. No. Um, that's a good one. I've done a fair bit of, you know, in the fridge, you know, eating some chocolate and saying, everyone goes, make sure you eat all your carrots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do that every night. No, I'm joking. No, um, my kids are like total little chocolate sniffers, and I that worries me because they can tell if I've been, you know, stuffing my face in the pantry, and I don't want them to see that because that's what I saw when I was growing up. If my mum was um, upset or stressed, she would be in the cupboard, you know, eating chocolate, mm. and my, I remember it vividly. So I don't want my kids to have that. You know, that memory or that association with food so mm. I'm pretty careful but you have to you have to you can't just preach it you have to practice it don't you yeah so, you know they they look at me all the time and they see now I try to most of the time eat salad and a protein um, but my tastes have changed too I love a steak I never used to like steak but I like you know a nice fillet steak mm. with some salad and my kids don't eat that, but anyway, we're working on it. Mm. So they see you, you lead by example. What else do you think it is that our girls need so that they don't get to be sitting here on this park bench going, I've just had all these body demons and I, you know, I hate my body, body image issues? <sighs> um, a lot more acceptance, I think, mm. um, you know, and that, that has also been difficult for me. Um, you know, I've been working on it. So I guess I, I don't know. I don't want my kids to go through what, you know, what I went through. But I'm cautious. Mm. But I know that my seven-year-old comes home sometimes and tells me what some of the other girls say in the schoolyard, and that worries me. You know, they say that they have to go for a run because they've had some chips. Like she's seven, um, and I just always talk about. Being strong, that's the main priority, you know, being strong, happy, 
um, healthy and fit. So I'm definitely strong mm. with all the farm work. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy. I'm very healthy. The fit, I'm getting it. Mm. Yeah. And it's such a motivating factor, isn't it, when you're, you're a mother and you see your kids there and you so want them to have this wonderful relationship with themselves, to love themselves. And mm -hmm. I find it such a, a motivator for me to actually not just fake it, but mm. work towards truly believing it. Mm. My kids my kids saw me when, um, oh, my eldest, you know, I didn't have much confidence. And I would say, you know, that all started to turn around um, when we moved out to the country and I spent a lot more time on myself. Um, for years, I would kind of put my support into helping my husband. Um, so I was his producer, we traveled together, we did everything together and I gave him everything, you know, and, um, and as you say in your book, you know, you need to put your oxygen mask on first and it's true. I started to, you know, do things for myself, not just for him and my kids have definitely seen that. Well, the, the, the littlest one, you know, wouldn't remember um, what I was like. I've certainly, I've, I've turned a big corner and, you know, my kids are at the forefront of why I'm doing that. Mm. So what did you do? What are these, these well, things? Well, I think spending more time um, with myself, um, doing a lot more nature observing, which sounds, you know, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like I'm just sitting out, which I pretty much was, you know, yeah. oh, there's a bird, there's oh, a cow. Sounds um, incredible. <laughs> just taking time out too, mm. not being so fast paced. Um, spending more time um, looking after myself, exercising. We didn't have internet until last November which most people you know, can't believe. Yeah. But I had no idea about Netflix. I used to do all my blogs and everything from the local library. Um, that was great mm, I because I couldn't do a lot of the, you know, work at home. So we would just be you know, sitting around talking, right? which just took us straight back to, I don't know, some olden day yeah. like world. And it was great, it really helped. Um, I also started to do things for myself so you know I would try to treat myself and I would say if I can walk the mount um, you know three times this month which is only you know it doesn't seem like that much but if I can walk it three times this month I'll go and have a facial and I'll that. treat myself to a facial um, and I hadn't done anything like that before because I was always too busy working for my husband so but the benefits when you look after yourself are huge. So that's, I guess, how it all started to change. I don't know. So what are the benefits? Well, looking after myself. Yeah. Um, I am, I, I'm not as anxious. Mm. Um, I have a lot more love for my kids. That sounds really bizarre, I but I do, yeah. Mm. I'm much more patient. Um, I love life more. And I'm really grateful for what I've got. That's a big thing too. Practice a lot of gratitude. Um, you know, my daughter and I were doing gratitude lists. Um, we tried to do it each night. So we'd have a little list for, you know, what we're grateful for. And that really helps. Because okay. it stops you comparing, you know. And I hear my daughter now say, you know, I'm, she might do a little prayer or something before she goes to bed. Or she, you know, will write her own list and she'll say, I'm really grateful for my good friends at school. I'm really grateful for my mum's hair. You know, but she's <laughs> grateful, so it's nice. Mm. Um, and yeah. that's all <laughs> led you to to actually getting Mummy Time TV yeah. happening. And and I was it, scared. Can I just say okay. I was really like I had to really push myself out there. Mm. So I was not, you know, look at me, look at me. When when my husband and I said, yep, the time is right. We're going to do this. I said to him, oh, we, I'll produce it. We need to find a host for the show oh. um, because I can't, I can't do it. I can't think fast enough on my feet. Yeah, you know, and I haven't done anything like that for a long time. So. Um, but he pushed me into it. So. so you haven't done it for the fame. I presume you haven't done it for the money because <laughs> you're no financing money. it yourself. <laughs> There's no money. Yes, that's So it. you're doing it for... Well, it's totally organic. I'm doing it, as I said, to help mum. Yeah. Um, I made a promise 
to myself um, and I always visualize it because I was in an apartment in Haymarket that's where we lived my husband went back out on the road I was there with this brand new baby my best girlfriend had been staying um, for you know my first two nights out of hospital and then drove home had a terrible car accident we didn't know if she would survive my husband as I said had gone back on the road this all happened you know at a time when you're very vulnerable and I was absolutely petrified um, but I was very good at hiding those feelings or I thought I was until um, I came unstuck later on but I remember making a promise if I get through this if I can keep this little baby alive um, then I promise you that I will help other mums so they never have to feel like me. <laughs> oh, it's eerie. Oh my gosh. Uh, um, mm. Yeah, so it's taken me a while, but I always knew that it would happen. It just was a matter of when. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having a moment here. Oh my gosh. I just know that, that feeling so well. I remember yeah. that, that feeling and that is what is so incredible when you can you can be in a time in your life thinking this is the worst I'm at rock bottom mm -hmm. I'm dealing with all this stuff and if only you could have a crystal ball and look forward and and, um, and say wow I'm gonna look back at this time and this is gonna be the time that I can use to do amazing things and mm. to help others in some way and to serve others mm. yeah if I didn't hit that that point I don't think that it would have um, challenged me enough to have gone through the transformation that I've gone through um, like people who I haven't seen for years see me now and they say oh my god you are like you look so different because mm. every aspect of my life had to change to I guess get to this point so which is the same as you yeah yeah and it's big. Mm. Mm. So you've got to watch this Mummy Time TV. <laughs> yes, you do. It's amazing. And you know what? When you're watching it, you can also do some moves at the same time. Yeah. Right? So this idea that exercise, it can be something that you might not really like to do very much or find it hard to find the time to do all these mm. excuses that we tell ourselves of why we can't do them. And in fact, when we are on our phones or watching our computer or TV, it can be a really, really amazing time to work this, yes. our tummies, our core, right? Yeah. Which often need a bit of work after childbirth. And mm. not only on the, the visual side of it, but it goes so much deeper, your core muscles, than, yeah. than a six pack. You know, this is like, it's your core. It's the middle, it's holding, both you know the upper body and the lower body because I use uh, my lower back I think yeah and then I get a really sore lower back especially if I'm if I'm quite tense I notice that my my lower back will be very sore and then my my left hip will kind of mm. give out yeah it's well all from core isn't it yeah the core is the lower back stuff is one of my favorite things about the core and what it does because I feel like as mums this part really often starts to to go and get a bit bit weak you know mm. we've spent a long time holding kids on one side um, we spent a lot of time bending over picking up kids getting them into car seats and yeah. it's really really pretty hard work on our lower back so this little move you can do when you're sitting down when you're at the park bench uh, at the park with your kids watching they're over there. yeah yeah they're, they're somewhere yeah, yeah they're, they're down <laughs> I think they're having a swim down oh, there yeah, actually they're... yeah Oh, that's good. She can't swim. No, kidding. They're not really here. They're at the farm. So just like these little moments that you were talking about of, of gratitude, yeah. um, these little moments that you can do to move your body, they really do add up to making a big difference. And they also change your mindset that you can't exercise, you can't do these things for yourself because you actually can, but sometimes mm -hmm. we need to make them a bit smaller and uh, a bit more something that uh, can be part of our regular mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you want to do them? Yeah. I'm All excited. right, let's two minute moves okay. with Chezzy on the park bench. I'm just going to pull this camera back so we can see all your gorgeousness. Oh, great. There we go. Yeah. No, don't. <laughs> I can't 
uh, uh, funny so no, much you can no, 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 no. Yeah, no. It's, we are going to do a little one. It's so, so easy, but what you want to do first yep. is scoop under like that, right? Oh. So you want to scoop your hips under, and if you don't do that, that's when these type of moves start to get into your lower back and not in your tummy, yeah? yeah. So you're there, you're, you're on your chair, your couch, your park bench, you're watching your episode of Mummy Time TV, yeah. and you're gonna laughing. fall in, you're laughing so hard. <laughs> oh. That's a good tummy I'll workout. Cry. Yeah, I'll cry. <laughs> and you're just gonna lift up one knee, and then drop it down. As you lift it, I want you to pull your belly button back towards your spine, right? Yeah. There you go. Okay, so that's oh, all you can, can kind of, if that's, that's enough for you, then you just stay doing this one, right? That could just be enough. Now, if you want more, you're going to keep that scoop under, pull into your tummy, hold on tight, and lift both. Ready? Yep. Go, up, oh, and down, that's it, squeeze in, and down. You feel that? Yeah. You don't need to do many of them, do you, until no. you really start to feel it. <laughs> so yeah, you can imagine you're on your phone. I mean, we say we don't have enough time to exercise, and yet how much time do we spend scrolling on those phones? You good there? Doing them so easy. <laughs> Sorry, I get a little excited. <laughs> don't get me talking. Okay, now the third version of this one is keeping that scoop under. Is yeah. your back feeling okay? Yeah, I can feel it stretch. Yes, that's good. So if you need more support, you just lean back a little bit more like that, and you can really scoop under. If you're at home, you can always put a cushion there or something just make sure that all feels all right and if it does we're going to do a fast version so we lift okay. one when that toe hits the other toe comes up that's it <laughs> that's it and there you go you keep that pulling back of your belly button towards your spine you keep your scoop under feeling and in this little time we have had this awesome core workout had enough <laughs> that's a good workout yeah, yeah isn't it's it? good isn't it so there are your three moves you just got your single one yeah. you've got your double one and you've got your toe tappy kind of ones whatever works for you do one two or three mm. There you go. Once you've done that, you probably want to do a nice little twist there on your chair. Yep. Twist there, and then the other. I'm gone. <laughs> and then the other way, she's out of here. <laughs> I could have got you to do a whole lot of more fun things on this bench, <laughs> let me tell you. Lift but I was, I was kind. <laughs> <laughs> kind? Okay, so, so we go to YouTube to watch the show. Yes. Where do you want to send everybody? Uh, well, you can head to our website, mummytime.co, mm -hmm. and uh, all the episodes are up there, or you can go to our own YouTube channel, Mummy Time TV. But if you go to mummytime.co, you'll be able to see um, we've got Mum Speak, which is the first blog where any mum can write a piece for mm -hmm. the website, um, and we'll publish it, regardless of writing experience. We edit it up and put it with your photo and put it up there, and. Um, that's been really cathartic for a lot of mums. Mm. And great. Oh, wonderful. Oh, were you going to so love these episodes. And there's also a podcast. Mum Stories podcast, yes. Mm -hmm. um, where I'm just traveling around talking to a whole range of mums, from celebrity mums to mums who have had postnatal depression. Um, that episode with Amanda Keller was, amazing. was pretty powerful, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've, we've spoken to. Um, Lots and lots of mums, not just in you know capital cities, but also out in the regional areas, and lots and lots of different stories to bring you, so that you can, I guess, hear from other mums that you know every journey is is not the same, um, but we are all on this journey together. That sounds really odd. Yeah, 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 and that <laughs> awesome feeling of knowing that you are not alone. It's so powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very powerful. So, what resonated? with you with this episode we would absolutely love to start a conversation in the comments if there's something that you're struggling with when it comes to motherhood if there's something that you've watched on mummy time tv that you've absolutely wet yourself laughing or that's really <laughs> struck a chord with you we'd love to know about it like and share this episode and if you would like this episode or any future ones into your inbox then head to twominutemoves.com live tv pop in your details and i will send them to you massive thank you to lorna jane for <laughs> For my gorgeous outfit here and uh, we can't wait to see you for another episode and thank you Shezzy so thank much you. you are such an inspiration you are to an me. inspiration you're an inspiration yeah. thank you thank you oh that was amazing she's an inspiration oh she's an inspiration she's an inspiration. okay I'm, I'm running off the rest <laughs> bye bye